My dear Theo, thanks for your nice letter and the fifty-franc note. I have thought now and then that my blood is actually beginning to think of circulating, which is more than it ever did during that last period in Paris. I could not have stood it much longer. Down here it is freezing hard, and there is still some snow left in the country. I have a study of a landscape in white with the town in the background, then two little studies of an almond branch already in flower in spite of it. The studies I've done are an old Arlesian, a landscape in the snow, a view of a bit of a pavement with a pork butcher's shop. The women here are beautiful, no humbug about that. But on the other hand, the museum in Arles is a horror and a humbug and ought to be in Tarasan. There is also a museum of antiquities, but these are genuine. My dear Theo, this morning at long last the weather changed and turned milder, and likewise I have already had an opportunity to learn what a mistral is. I have been for several walks in the country hereabouts, but it is quite impossible to do anything in this wind. The sky is a hard blue with a great bright sun, which has melted almost all the snow, but the wind is so cold and so dry that it gives you goose flesh. As for my work, I brought back a size one canvas today. It is a drawbridge with a little cart going over it, outlined against a blue sky. The river blue as well, the banks orange, colored with green grass, and a group of women washing linen in smocks and multicolored caps. And another landscape with a little country bridge and more women washing linen. Also, an avenue of plane trees near the station. Altogether twelve studies since I've been here. Ever yours, Vincent. My dear Theo, I have just finished a group of apricot trees in bloom in a little orchard of fresh green. Thank you very much, too, for all the steps you have taken toward the exhibition of the independence. I quite approve of your exhibiting the livres. Its title ought to be Roman Parisien. On the whole, I'm very glad that they've been put with the other impressionists. But though it doesn't matter in the least this time, in the future, my name ought to be put in the catalogue as I signed it on the canvas, namely Vincent and not Van Gogh, for the simple reason that they do not know how to pronounce the latter name here. My dear Theo, I have been working on a size 20 canvas in the open air in an orchard, lilac plowland, a reed fence, two pink peach trees against a sky of glorious blue and white probably the best landscape I have done. I had just brought it home when I received from our sister a Dutch notice in memory of Mauve, with his portrait, the portrait very good, the text, poor and nothing in it, a pretty watercolor. Something, I don't know what, took hold of me and brought a lump to my throat, and I wrote on my picture, Souvenir de Mauve, Vincent Theo. I have another orchard as good as the pink peach trees, apricot trees, of a very pale pink. At the moment I'm working on some plum trees, yellowish-white, with thousands of black branches. I am using a tremendous lot of colors and canvases, but all the same I hope it isn't a waste of money. Out of four canvases, perhaps one at the most will make a picture, like the one for Tierstieg or Mauve, but the studies, I hope, will come in handy for exchanges. I must also have a starry night with cypresses, or perhaps, above all, a field of ripe corn. There are some wonderful nights here. I am in a continual fever of work. My dear Theo, now I must tell you that I am working on the two pictures which I want to make copies of, the pink peach tree gives me the most trouble. You see from the three squares on the other side of this page that the three orchards make a series, more or less. I have also just now a little pear tree, vertical, between two horizontal canvases. That will make six canvases of orchards in bloom. I have ten orchards now, not counting 
three little studies, and one big one of a cherry tree, which I've spoiled. These orchards with the Pont de l'Anglais will make a first series. If you would rather leave them to dry out here, perhaps it would be as well. They are now on a covered terrace to dry. I say, Daumier is en vue at the Beaux-Arts, and Gavarnie too, aren't they? Bravo for the Daumier, but not for the Beaux-Arts. Here is a sketch of an orchard that I planned more particularly for you to celebrate May 1st. It's absolutely clear and done all at once. A frenzy of impastos of the faintest yellow and lilac on the original white mass. I saw Bernard's still life unfinished and thought it magnificent. My dear Theo, well, today I've taken the right wing of this complex which contains four rooms, or rather two, with cabinets. It is painted yellow outside, whitewashed inside, on the sunny side. I have taken it for 15 francs a month. Now my idea would be to furnish one room, the one on the first floor, so as to be able to sleep there. This house will remain the studio and the storehouse for the whole campaign as long as it lasts in the south, and now I am free of all the innkeeper's tricks. They're ruinous, and they make me wretched. Just now Bernal writes me that he also has a whole house, but he has his for nothing. What luck. I hope I have landed on my feet this time, you know, yellow outside, white inside, with all the sun, so that I shall see my canvases in a bright interior. The floor is red brick. Outside, the garden of the square, of which you will find two more drawings. I think I can promise you that the drawings will get better and better. Ever yours, Vincent. <laughs> 